I go on every Facebook live looking like this, right? I know, putting on my lip gloss. It's become a bad habit, actually. It's become a really, really bad habit of mine to jump on Facebook, putting on my lip gloss. Somehow I'm just loving my locks. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm in a locks mood and I'm really, really loving it. So if I seem obsessed with my locks, just forgive me. I'm just loving my locks. I'm waiting for some people to come back on Facebook Live. And once you guys are here, we're going to have a conversation. Ah, fantastic. So here we are. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Hey, there's somebody there. Hello. This is my third Facebook Live today. No, my sixth. I did two in a private group. I did three on Facebook. It's my fifth one. Hey, hello. Who is in the house? How you all doing? I'm waiting on some more people to join me. I'm going to talk about, can I just close that door, Mikhail? Hey, there are three people watching and I can't see who you are. It's not fair because you can see me and I can't see you. So I'm going to jump in in a second. So 30 seconds from now, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to talk about secrets, five, three secrets to success or six. I'm going to give you a bonus one and I'm going to talk about, um, you are your choices. So. Mikhail, I'm doing a Facebook live. <laughs> Mikhail, I don't want to hear Horrid Henry right now. I'm doing a Facebook live. Can you please close my office door? So we're going to talk about five, six secrets of success. Yes, baby. Hi, MGA. No, play your, play your saxophone. Play your leapfrog. Close my door. Play your saxophone upstairs. Close my office door, please, baby. Thank you. Okay, so hi MG, hi Audrey. So we are our choices, and I think that is really a sum total of I could say that and leave this Facebook live. The choices we make this decide who we are. We are a sum total of our choices. And so or if we choose to want to be successful, then we are gonna have to make choices that are gonna be in a, inadvertently leading up to being successful. So I'm going to talk a little bit about who I am. And so I know a lot of you know who I am. Hi, Caroline. I just made a post about our book tour. I'm excited about that. Um, I'm really excited about that because one of the things I've come to learn that in order to be a power player, you have to walk and talk and act in power. So in order to be a power player, you have to be a power player. You have to walk your talk and you have to talk your talk and you've got to hang around the right people. So I'm excited about the book tour. I've just did a, um, a post about the book tour. Really exciting about the, the, finale, the, the book tour. I'm feeling such amazing energy about this book tour because it brings back really great memories for me. Last year we did the book tour and it was phenomenal, made some great connections, had some amazing authors published from that. In under a year, the authors who were published from the book tour have just done tremendously well. Um, Audrey, to name a few, I mean, today I got an email from Audrey Joseph. I haven't yet looked at it, but the content of what I know it is just makes me smile because that came out of the book tour. The fact that she has now said, I'm ready, Ava. I'm, I'm tired of standing in my own way and I'm ready. It started with one small book, one simple book. And let me show you the book because I keep books. I keep certain books nearby. Audrey Joseph started with this book. Um, and I keep it in my office. She started with this book. She met me. We had one conversation. And out of that one conversation, she wrote a book called Forgiveness, um, The Journey to Healing the Heart. And this book has gotten her on BBC. She's been in the American television, American papers, American interviews. And she's just beaming from strength to strength. So, you know, I'm excited about the book tour. So let me go back to today's conversation. You are a total of your choices. That is no question about it. That is the reality of what it is. You are a total of your choices. And so in order to be successful, I'm going to drop five tips here today and probably a bonus. So the first thing is you have to break the routine. In order to be successful, you are going, hi, Shireen, aren't you lucky girl? You're having me twice in a day, right? You're one lucky girl. So in order to be successful, 
You have to break the routine. You have to start doing things that you have never done before. You have to be able to break the cycle, take a risk and experiment and be bold and be brave. The, the most successful people are the people who are prepared to take a risk, are people who are prepared to be bold. So what do I mean by that? So for example, I went to Poland to speak on Saturday. I've never spoken in Poland before. And I was in front of 10,000 plus people. I don't speak their language. I'm an English speaking person. As a matter of fact, I cannot even speak English very well. I've got a speech impediment and I still struggle with certain words. I speak fast because sometimes the, the, the fact that I have this impediment, I, I tend to go quickly. On Saturday, however, I had to break my routine. I was I was using an interpreter and I needed to knock this audience. I needed to make them feel something. I needed to be booked again by the organizers. So I had to slow myself down. I had to mentally tell myself, I'm gonna do it right now for you. I had to mentally tell myself that if I speak too fast, the Polish audience will not understand me. I literally had to go into my own mind, condition it in a different way. Hi, Vanita, baby girl. I had to recondition my mind and I had to, Mikhail, I had to change the routine. Now, the routine is that to an English speaking audience, pardon? Okay, you can have one session of Horrid Henry, but you've got to play your saxophone again and you've got to do your leap, leap, leap pad. Is that a promise? Yes. Good, thank you very much. So I told myself that in order to reach the target audience of 10,000 plus people, I had to speak slower. And as a matter of fact, not just did I have to speak clear, faster or slower, sorry, I had to speak in tune with the interpreter. Now, that's not normal for me. You guys know me, I'm always racing my words because that's who I am. And so in the middle of that, that situation that I was thrown in in Poland, I had to, I had to break my routine. I had to speak differently. I had to speak slower and I had to try and be extremely clear. I did more than that. I broke the routine Thank you. Mom, yes, baby. Do you have your phone? I have my phone. I'm doing a Facebook live. Do you have your I have my laptop. Yes. What do you want? <laughs> I'm using both as well, Mikhail. Go and look for your iPad. You have two. So I, I not just, I didn't just change how I spoke, but I went into the audience. I literally went down into the audience and was touching people, speaking to people shaking hands with people, hugging people. Now, that was me breaking routine. That's not normal because they don't know me. Number one, I'm black. Let's just get this clear. Hi, Aliyah. How you doing, sweetheart? Number one, I'm black. So as a black girl in Poland, and no disrespect, Poland's an amazing place. The people were amazingly friendly. I was treated like royalty. I cannot complain. I was so royally treated. My kids were royally treated. We were like royalty. I cannot fault the organizers. But I'm black in a very white dominated country. And I was engaging with the audience. Um, I got emails today from people from Poland saying, if we sent you a picture, could you autograph it for us? Now that's touching, but that's because I literally took a risk. Successful people break the norm. So that's number one. I want you to get pen and paper and write these things down. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, he's in everything. Oh my God. Did you not see him with Eric Thomas? He's in everything. He has Eric Thomas on FaceTime. Like, is that serious? Now, that's the first thing. Number two, you have to, successful people have very clear goals and timelines. I hope you're writing. So number one is to break the routine. Number two, have very clear goals and timelines. Now, here's the thing, yeah? A lot of people have goals. We write goals down. Hi, Kareem. 
a lot of us write goals on paper. I want to achieve this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. Every day I wake up, I have a goal list. I do. I have a list with everything I need to achieve every single day. I do that every day. Okay. And so I operate on the 80, the 2080 rule. So 20% of my activities, that's going to yield me 80% result. And that's how I operate. Now you cannot just set goals and you don't have timelines. That's no point. So every day that you set a goal, you must put a timeline to it. And when people work with me, and Clara will tell you this, Audrey will tell you this, Valerie will tell you this, Magda will tell you this, Sanya will tell you this, Jason will tell you this, a lot, Daryl will tell you this, all of my clients will tell you, I will tell you about timelines. I love timelines because timelines give you something to work towards, especially with me, I work with the end in mind. So I work from the, from the end to the beginning. That's how I operate. So number two, successful people, they set goals and they have timelines. You cannot just sit there and think, oh my God, I want to, I want to buy a car. By when? By 2025? By 16, 2060 or 60? When do you want to buy that car? So when you are, when you want to be successful, you've got to set goals with timelines. Number three, successful people create a new narrative. Now, what do I mean by that? A lot of us are just so used to the normal way of doing things. I'll give an example. And this is not even the best example, but it's one that comes to my mind. So my book, The Mango Girl, everybody's used to a book that says forward by at the front. And I thought, well, the, the person who endorsed my book is not a forward, but I want her on the cover of my book because she's a really big deal. And so she's an Emmy Award television producer. She's on a lot of American television. She's drop dead gorgeous. She's my good friend. She's my super friend. And she's coming to speak at Lisa Nichols event in, in October next year. I'm on one now. What are you on, Audrea? What are you on? I'm on one. When Audrey is ready, tell us what you're on. And so she's speaking at Lisa Nichols. She's my good friend. She's my buddy. We, we are pals. And I wanted her name on the front of my book. So rather than waiting to get a forward, which she didn't have the time to do, I really put endorsed by at the front of my book. I'm changing that, the narrative. I'm not waiting on somebody to tell me that, oh, this is the way it's done. I'm changing the narrative. I'm deciding my own rules here. I'm rewriting my story. I'm rewriting the way I want my stuff to be. So successful people are always able to change the narrative. They're always able to change the way things are because innovation comes because people try new things. So if you want to be successful, number three is you have to be prepared to be innovative and change the narrative. So let's just recap. Number one, you have to be able Oh, I know you are, Audrey. I'm your coach after all. I know, I know, I know. I didn't want to say that online. So let's just recap. We're saying that you are the total of your choices. And we're looking at five tips that successful people live by. Number one, they break the routine. So they're able to say, well, this is the way it's done. I'm not going to do it that way. Number two, they have goals, very clear goals. And they also have timelines. They don't just have goals sitting down there on paper. I was talking to a client today. And he had 2016 goals written down from the 29th of December, 2015. He has not achieved one of those. Do you know why? Apart from him not being motivated, apart from him standing in his own way, apart from him procrastinating, he didn't have timelines. And when you don't have clear timelines on your goals, then how do you know what to work towards? You know, I love when I'm talking to my clients, I said, okay, how about by next week, Friday, will you be ready? And I put them on the tight constraints and tight timelines, because if you don't have timelines, you will just work to nothing. You have nothing to work towards. You have nothing to guide you. So you are a total of your choices. And the choices you make will decide whether you are successful or not. So that is number three. Number four, number three, sorry, is change the narrative. Successful people are always changing the narrative. And the example I used a while ago is that my super friend, Darius Chisholm, Emmy Award television producer, 
has endorsed the Mango Girl. We needed that to go into pre-production for the movie. Plus, we're talking about a book deal behind the scenes. I must give you a joke. So today, my my marketing person, so I'm building a new team, and my marketing person is writing some courses, um, writing the script for some courses for me. And she said to me, oh, Ava, we could give away the Mango Girl as part of the bonus that people get. Mm, there you are, Shireen. No timelines, right? So let me let me coach you right now. Let's do a live coaching, Shireen. Let me ask you this question. How many of those goals have you achieved since 2014 that haven't been written down? While you're coming, I'll continue to talk. Can you tell me how many have you achieved since 2014, Shireen? You've got them written down. How many have you achieved? I'm about to strip my vision board. Hi, Chrissy. How you doing? Hi, hi, Daniel. Hi, princess. Oh my God, I feel love right now. I'm about to strip down my vision board because a lot of my 2016 goals have been achieved already. And I'm just really glad I can replace it with new goals. So, so back to my story. So today I got asked, can we give the mango girl? And I said, no, we can't. We can't give the mango girl away because we're talking about a book deal behind the scenes. I'm having discussion with a publishing company. There you go. There you go, Shireen. None. None. And I, I thank you for your honesty. I thank you for just being true and honest to say, you know what, Ava, I'm not going to lie to you. I've achieved none of them. But do you think if you had a goal and a timeline, you'd achieve any? Probably yes. So goals are important. Audrey was to send me something today. And she's going to send me half of it. And I said, don't send it to me, Audrey. Hi, Chrissy. Thank you. Thank you. I said, don't send it to me. I want all of it. We agreed that we we're going to have all of them. And so because you don't have all of them, don't send it to me. Oops, I can't see you. Can't you see me, Chrissy? I'm here. You can't see me? So basically, you have to have your goals written down with timelines, okay? The fourth one is that don't stand for unacceptable behavior. I really, really like this one. Successful people don't stand for crap. Let me put it very nicely. They don't stand for crap. It doesn't mean that they are up their own buttocks. It doesn't mean that they are arrogant. It doesn't mean that they are better than anybody else. It just means that they know. <laughs> it just means, hi, Tina. Hi, how you doing? It just means that they know what they stand for. And so they're not going to stand for unacceptable behavior. Because in order to be successful, you have to have order in your life. In order to be successful, you have to have respect in your life. In order to be successful, you have got to know what you stand for, what to accept, and what not to accept as well. So successful people know what to stand for. They don't stand unacceptable behavior. Successful people understand that to go fast, yeah, you 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 can you have to go far. You can't go alone. They understand the power of a marriage, and I don't mean marriage here in the sense of. I just made dinners when I had mashed potatoes, and if you know anything about me, I don't like any mashed potato on their own. So I did sweet potato mash with the regular potatoes. I did asparagus, and I did some chicken in a korma sauce and i actually cooked on my own so i made dinner today from scratch but let me give you a secret let me digress a bit digest digress a bit today i use my nutribullet because my kids won't eat let me take let me talk quietly my kids will not eat things like onions and aubergines and stuff so i got the nutribullet and i blended all of those together to cook <laughs> So I've kind of put that in there so they won't know it. So they'll just think it's a nice sauce, but it's really vegetables. So that's what I did today for my kids. So back to what we're talking about. So successful people understand that they, in order to be successful, they cannot go alone. Most successful people have had some form of a partnership. Chicken breast, saute, potatoes, mushroom. Nice. That sounds very yummy. I don't like chicken breast much. Um... My reason for not liking chicken breast, I can't even say on Facebook Live, but I don't like chicken breast. I, I find it very dry. Um, I like bony parts of meats. And when I do have it, when I do buy chicken like I did yesterday, I cut the breast off and I make like fajitas or tortilla, or whatever I'm going to make with that. So that's the only way I can have chicken breast. Apart from that, I don't like it. 
but in, in terms of back to what we're talking about, and I don't want to get distracted anymore. Successful people understand that they have to do teamwork. They have to work with other people. Hi, Melissa. Happy belated birthday, honey. I've been watching the pictures and stuff and how your staff's treating you. I may not always comment, but I'm watching. So successful people understand that in order to be successful, at some point in their success, they will need to work with other people. They need to collaborate. They need to joint venture. They need to understand that to go fast, they can go alone. But to go far, they go together. And those are some of my simple tips on how to be successful. Remember that you are a sum total of your choices. And in today's business market where it's so noisy, everybody has something to sell, everybody has something to offer. It's for you to understand what's the best way to be successful. Sit back and analyze and, and look for, for resources that you can collaborate with. So within my group, for example, on Facebook called Awakening Your Best Life, I encourage the people in my group to collaborate. I encourage them to find other people who've got services or products that they can work together. Because on my own, I couldn't do Eric Thomas by myself and have such an, a successful event. Yes, I had to work with Sonia. And today we had a, a um, meeting. She came to my house. I have to show my candle. She turned up with my vanilla candle. We had a business meeting today. We're doing a, a, a we were working on our business, our products, and she turned up with a vanilla candle. But we work together on many products. Now, hear this and hear this well. Because you work with people doesn't mean that you have to um, lose your own business. So I still have Ava Eager Brown, the brand, and I still do individual stuff, but I also have Ava and Sonia, the brand as well. So collaborating, joint venturing, doesn't mean you have to lose your own brand identity. If anything, it enhances your brand. So those are some of the things I wanna encourage you to look at as you go into 2017, which is not a very far way away. Trust me, 2017 is just on the road. How can you grow as a person? How can you shift? How can you change? How can you start becoming the master of your game that you really want to do? How can you achieve true mastery? It's through some of these things. Collaboration, joint ventureship, understanding how to leverage other people's brand, how to amplify your own message. You know, all of those, how to ace stuff. How do you ace who you are? How do you master your significance in the world? How are you gonna do that? Because some of you will be stuck in 2016 and you'll stay there. There's nothing anybody can do about that because you cannot move people who are not ready. That's what I learned. I had a new client yesterday and she, I've, out of Eric Thomas, I've gotten quite a few um, new clients from the Eric Thomas event. And one lady um, I had yesterday said to me, oh my God, you know, I'm so wanting to work with you. Da, 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 da. And she was really excited. And then I burst her bubble when I said to her, I've been doing this for less than two years. The line went really quiet. And she was like, no, no, you're lying. No, 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 no. I said, yes. And she didn't believe me. But get this. In order to build a rock solid mindset for success, you have to decide to be action based. And that's the difference. You have to decide to be action based. You have to understand what you want, how you want it, when you want it. It goes back to goal setting and having timelines. You have to prioritize your learning. So when I, your learning needs. So when I come on Facebook, I'm not on Facebook looking at what Clara is wearing, what Carolyn here looks like. That's not what I'm there for. I'm very, very laser focused in my goals. I'm very laser focused about what I use certain media for, why I'm there. I also have to understand that I need to have competitive advantage. So I've got to work on my, my craft, my thing, what I'm doing. So yet, and Clara, when we met, the first thing I told you, three key things, tunnel vision, right? Was really important for me. I told you that. I'm so ready. I want to break before 2016 months. You have to make the decision. See, it's good to say it, Shireen, and I'm glad for you stepping up and saying I'm ready, but you have to motivate yourself by tracking your own success and deciding, am I succeeding at the right pace? Am I doing the right thing? Am I really where I should be? Because the reality is that you have to create your own environment for success. I can't, I can help you by being your coach and mentor, but I can't do it for you. And that's the reality. Hi, Gershom, how are you doing? So you have to understand the psychology behind how you work, the psychology behind your products, the psychology behind 
you know, relationships, all of those things come into play. And I just, I'm just glad that I understand to an extent I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm still growing, I'm still learning, but I understand to an extent who am I, who, you know, I know who my target audience is. I know who I work well with. I know who I don't work real well with. Um, I know that in order to, for example, to, to, to be a coach and a speaker and an author, you have to learn how to sell the power of selling. How many of us understand how to sell? Can I tell you that out of every five clients that come to me, new business, new people come to me, I convert three. I, I do. Out of every five clients I talk to, I convert three. I do. That's the truth. I don't have a lot of clients because I don't want a whole lot. And I have clients in different bands. So I've got the clients who access my products online, like my courses. I've got the clients who only come to me for a blueprint and they go away. I've got the clients who come to me for a roadmap and they go away. I've got the clients who work with me in a short term, medium term VIP basis. And I've got the clients who I'm just there as accountability. That's it. I don't work with anybody for a whole year. Six months is my maximum. Because if after six months, if you can't get certain results to be able to fly on your own, and then you come back for a different product with me, then it means I'm doing something wrong. That's the reality of it. So you need to understand how to create your own success. You have to understand that you have to invest in yourself. So stop watching so much television. Stop gossiping so much. You know, <laughs> I love you. I'm sure there's going to become a time. I mean, they're talking about it right now where they want to do have camera follow me around. Um, did I just say that? Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> did I just say that? Ouch. That was okay. I've already said it. So there's going to become a time when they'll be doing the life of the manga girl. So cameras will follow me around for, for, for days and end. <laughs> Thank you, Khalid. Um, I'm still learning. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still in the process of learning. I'm not even where I really want to be. Um, but they plan to have cameras follow me around. Hi, Tracy. And I'd love you guys to see what my days are like. Like seriously, I get up in the morning, I do my prayer, I shower. It depends on what I'm, which day of the week it is. I take no, not that I don't shower every day. Don't get that wrong. <laughs> Oh, my laugh is so vulgar. <laughs> but if I take my son to school, I get up in a shower and I get, get him to school, get his breakfast ready. My day is very, 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 very structured. It's very routine, very structured. And I don't need it on paper because I'm intrinsically motivated. I know what I want for myself. I know I want to buy my daughter her first car, for example. And I want it to be a nice car. I know I want to buy my children, you know, apartments for themselves. I want to buy my daughter an apartment. I want to buy my son an apartment. I want to make them mortgage free before a particular age. I want to do that for my kids. I want to give back to St. Elizabeth in Jamaica. I want to, I want to do certain things. So I know that I realistically have goals. And so I have to work like a pig to get it done. But what I also know is that the work I'm putting in right now, in two years time, I'll be putting in quarter of that work and getting back six times the results. You see, you have to know that you're going to put in 120% now and getting 10% back. But if you consistently do that, if you consistently do that, then one day will come when you put in 10% and get 120% back. But the problem with most of you is that you're not consistent. I have clients on Facebook right now who I say to them, do a video a day for five days and they fail. They really, really fail at it. They couldn't be consistent for one week. But they want to be successful. They want to be just like you. They want to have all that you have. They want to have, they want to speak in front of 10,000. They want to have a book that's been coming a movie. They want it all, but they don't want to do a thing. Now, in the beginning, God created the earth. In the beginning, God created the earth. In the beginning, he created, he worked. He did day one, let there be. Day two, he did this. Day three, God worked for seven days. Hi, Nicolene. So if God worked for seven days and created the earth, how do you expect to not work and achieve anything? How do you expect to not put in anything 
and then you want to reap everything because you see god created we didn't just wake up and then there was light and water in the beginning god created the bible says it and whether you're religious or not let, let, let me step back and talk about those who are not religious if you want a cake if you have children as parents and you're not religious and unless you go to the store and you buy the cake and you're not sure what's in it because your children have got allergies but if you are home and you want to make a cake with your children you're gonna have to first of all get the ingredients you're gonna have to light the oven you're gonna have to grease the bowl you're gonna have to mix the ingredients together you have to work to get that product for your kids so how do you expect to be successful and you do not want to work i don't understand it my daughter said to me recently enough she said mommy and I'm, I'm paraphrasing she said mommy your work ethics are admirable did you hear that now for me if i did nothing else for my daughter that's enough she said your work ethics are admirable ask sonia ask sanya ask my kids they will tell you i work i put in the work So if you want to be successful, you've got to understand that you have to be prepared to put in the work. You can't do the shortcuts anymore. The, 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 <laughs> the route to success means you have to climb the ladder. You have to take your, your hands out of your pocket. Your hands have got to come out of your pocket. You can't climb it in your stiletto and your hands are in the pocket. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So, so I, I sat down today and looked at my diary for the next couple of months. And I understand how my diary looked that way. Oh no, miss your appointment. Really. Come for the replay, Shireen. Come miss your appointment. Come for the replay. You gotta come back for the replay. You gotta come back for the replay. So, yeah, yeah. So here's what I want you to do for me. Let me let me let me run. Let me finish so that Sheree can not miss her appointment. You have to understand that you are born to be successful. Everybody has got the true innate potential to be successful. But you have to create that environment for success. You have to unleash your own creative power. You have to unleash your own success mission. You have to unleash your own success revenue streams. You have to master your own hustle. You have to master your significance. You have to master your productivity. Nobody's going to do it for you. Your coach can show you how to do it. They will not do it for you. You have to unlock your own potential. You have to tap into your greatness. I can't do it for you. Love you too, girl. Come back for the replay. Okay? You have got to tap into your own greatness. Everything you need, you have. I have clients who, when they came to work with me, they said to me, I can't afford you. And I said to them, okay. And one girl said to me last week, is that all you're going to say? I said, what do you want me to say? She said, are you not going to tell me that I can find it? I said, nope, I'm not going to tell you because you already know the answer. Long story short, she's on my course. Because it's not just about money. You have to kickstart your own journey. Nobody's going to do it for you. People say, oh, Ava, how do you? you have to build your own journey. You have to gain your own momentum. You have to convert your own followers. You have to create your own hype. You have got to do the work. You have to. And here's what I want you to know. You were born to be successful. You were not born to be small in the world. But you're going to have to polish your mindset and become a power player. You're going to have to master your own significance. You're going to have to master your own hustle. You're going to have to step into your greatness because I cannot do it for you. So if now is the time for you to say, I'm ready. If now is the time for you to say, I'm tired of being small in the world. If now is the time for you to say, 2016, I'm not going to let it finish without me starting something. If now is the time for you to say that, there's no magic wand, but I'm ready. If now is the time for you to say, enough is enough. It's now is the time for you to say to yourself, I cannot keep stopping and starting. I have to make a full flow decision. If now is the time for you to say, I'm going to master my own life. I'm 
going to shift. I'm going to change. If now is the time for you to say enough, I'm ready. I'm tired. I'm tired of watching Ava succeed. I'm tired of watching everybody else do well. I'm tired of going around in circles. I'm tired of feeling like the squirrel in the cage. If now is that time, if you are truly ready to step up and stand into your greatness, if you're ready to let your business start being successful, if you're ready to start seeing your relationship successful, you've got to take a decision. You have to. You cannot continue this way. You know, I used to be at the place where I just kept going around in circles. I kept going around in circles. I kept just navigating from one bad, bad end to another, one roadblock to another. I kept navigating, navigating, navigating until eventually I got tired. I, I can't navigate anymore because I had to own my own presence. If now is the time for you to own your presence, dump your mind's trash. Come forth and say, I'm ready to be called great. I'm ready to, to tap into my skills, my power, my talent. You know, you are you are capable of immense success. You, I look at myself today. Come on, guys. I'm no different from anybody else. I'm no different. I was born in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. I saw mangoes on the train. I was from a household where we did not have enough beds to sleep on, and I went to school barefooted. But I failed maths and English in high school, and I've had two failed marriages, yet I've managed to increase my visibility, amplify my voice, place myself, position myself in such a way that people like Lisa Nichols, Eric Thomas, can say, I want to work with you, then there's got to be something in this mindset that I know that you don't seem to know. Oh, I, did, I don't intend for you to cry, baby. That's not my plan. I, I'm not here for you to cry at all. I've got some tissue for you. Do you want it? Shall I send it over? I'm going to ship it to Jamaica, okay? There it is. You've got to master your life. You're doing yourself an injustice. You're doing your kids an injustice. You're doing yourself an injustice. I'm at peace for the first time in my life. And I'm 40 plus years old. And I'm at peace for the first time because I have finally found my purpose. I've been awakened and now I am standing in my true purpose, living the life I was meant to live. And I know that can be you. No more shenanigans. It's time to make a change. It's time to step up and be counted. It's time to understand that you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to be rich, successful. Success is not just about money. You don't have to have significance by money. Money is what you need necessarily. You gotta find the true value, the purpose of that which you were created for. You have got to find the true purpose for which you were intended. You cannot be doing the business and you're borrowing money every month. You can't be doing the business and you, you, you don't have clothing. You can't, you need to leave a legacy. You owe it to your children to do a legacy building. If you cannot leave a legacy for yourself, you owe it to your children. Greatness is in you. Everybody is great. There are 1 million Ava around. There are lots of the same skills, the same talent, and even better. The difference is the mindset is different. I, I talk to clients every day who are even more intelligent than I am. And I'm, I'm honest, much more intelligent than I am. But I don't have my mindset. They are not actionable. They are not actionable. Some people allow 2,000 pounds, 1,500 pounds to stand in the way of them starting something amazing. Money is nothing. You know what? If I allowed 6,000 pounds to stand in my way and my book, you would never have met me. Bamboo and Fern cost me 6,000 pounds. 6,000 pounds it cost me. Right? It cost me six grand and I took a risk. I took a risk on myself. Why don't you take a risk on yourself today? I took a risk, the best risk I've ever taken on myself. 
and published Bamboo and Fern. I invested in it. And today is the platform on which I stand. I stand on Bamboo and Fern. That's what I stand on. Bamboo and Fern is what I stand on. It is my, it's my foundation. But I would never know if I didn't take that risk. I would never know if I didn't take that chance. How many of you are on this call today? Too afraid to jump over the ravine. You're looking over the other side. You know that this way you want to be. You see all of the obstacles. You see the stones and the pit. And you are afraid to make that quantum leap because you're afraid. So the, over the other side, you need to be over there. You know that's where you need to be. You want to be there. You need to be there. But you are too afraid to jump. And that's what's holding you back. The inability to jump. The inability to say, you know what? I'm going to jump because what you, you keep saying, what if I fall? What if I fail? Good God, what if you succeed? I take some great risk these days. I'm such a risk taker. I take risk every day of my life. But I know that in taking the risk, what I see happen is open doors. The biggest risk I took was my book. I'm standing on that book today. It's the platform. And all of the authors who are bold enough and audacious enough and tenacious enough to say, I'm going to step up. I'm ready. I'm going to write my book. It doesn't matter what the book is. I'm going to start this business. I'm going to joint venture with somebody. When you come off this call, have a think about who you can joint venture with. Who can you collaborate with? And let me be very honest with you. And this is going to hurt somebody. The reason some of you are not prepared to work with anybody is because you're selfish. I'm going to say that again. The reason that some of you are not prepared to work with anybody else is because you are selfish. Let me lean in so you can see my big face. You are selfish. You want everything to be about you. You want the me, 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 me. You want the glory to just be on you. It's all about you. It's not about you, man. So your brand is not growing because you can't share with somebody else. Caroline and Audrey can't grow together. Um, Jason and together because they want it all. And Audrey wants it all. And Varys wants it all. And so guess what's happening? While you're talking about the fact that you're together, some other person, Shireen and somebody else on the call, Shireen and, and Tina work together and achieve success. And then you wonder how did they achieve it? Because they know how to work together. The reason some of you are not successful is because you don't have the right mind. Your mind is not pure. Your heart is not pure. You can't see anybody else succeed. It's all about you. You're poisonous in your mindset. And it's going to hurt somebody. It's going to hurt somebody. The reason you can't succeed is because you sit there watching everybody else and you are grudgeful, you're jealous, you're envious. And that's why you can't succeed. But it's not too late to change. It's not too late to change. It's not too late to change and say, you know what? This way is not working for me. I am ready to change. I told you. I told you. I just got, an, I'm talking to you right now and I got an email from Poland. Hi, Ava. How can we have your books? We don't speak good English, but we would love to get your book. That's it. That's the ripple of taking a risk with one book. I spoke in Poland on Saturday for half an hour. I can't begin to tell you how much I was paid. Half an hour of my time. And if I told some of you that to say, I must coach you for six months, you'd be like, oh my God, are you serious? That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Yes, it is a lot of money. It's what I charged my clients for six months to work with them. I got paid for it in half an hour. 30 minutes of my time, plus posh hotel, room service, chauffeur, my kids, everything. I didn't pay a penny. 
It was, hi, Christian. It was great. Christian, we need to have a meeting. It was great in Poland. There you are. Christian is on the on my Facebook Live. He was in Poland. He saw me speak. I'm not making it up. So the reason some of you are not successful is because you are not prepared to work with other people. And if you're not prepared to work with others, then how do you expect to grow? You're coming. Are you coming to London, Christian, or going to Poland? Are you coming from Poland? Let me know. There you are. It's not the cost. It's what is worth to you. And that's what we need to understand. It's not how much it costs. It's how much it Oh, you're coming from Poland. Awesome. Let's have a meeting next week, Christian. Let's have, let's put something in our diary and have a conversation. I sent you my diary, so please put something in. Oh, nice. Oh, if I knew you were still in Poland, I left my, my leather jacket at the hotel. My, my leather jacket I left at the hotel at the Hilton. Great. So let me wrap up now because I've been on this Facebook Live for a long time. A long time now, long time. We don't have no nice time. Do you think about that? See, I'm a comic, right? Long time. We don't have no nice time. What else? So, that's a Bob Marley, by the way. Is it Bob Marley? No, it's not. Oh, I'm going to ask the hotel Christian to put it down for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so let me just recap. So you understand what we're talking about today. I think it's really important that you guys get what I'm trying to say to you. Okay. I'm trying to say to you that success leaves clues. And in order to be successful, you have to buy, you have to collaborate. Yeah. Um, because you have to build by and collaborate. Can somebody hashtag that for me? In order to be successful, you have to build by and collaborate. Can somebody hashtag that for me, please? Anybody. So you have to collaborate. Yeah. You have to buy. Yeah. You have to build. You have to collaborate to be successful. That's it. It's just a simple you should be on Britain Got Talent. No, I shouldn't be. I ain't got no talent, mate. <laughs> oh, Khalid, you just love me. I just think. Oh, guys, by the way, Khalid is, let me just tell you who Khalid is. Khalid is my, my Khalid worked with me, and I'm not easy to please, and he will tell you. Khalid is one of, Khalid's my, my web person. He does my web stuff. So when you see Purpose Walk, Paint to Purpose, um, some of Ava Eagle Brown, he's going to redesign that. When you see um, Purpose Walk for 2017, that's Khalid. The Eric Thomas website, all of that malarkey is Khalid. So if you want web designing, there is Khalid. That's called collaboration. It's me not being afraid to say, I'm, ready, I'm, I'm willing to share Khalid with you all, okay? So if you want me to share, I can share Khalid, no problem. So he's on the call. If you need a graphic person, if you need web designing, inbox him. He can help you out. So, and he's, he, he will give you Ava's price. Ouch. Did I just say that? Love you, Khalid. <laughs> anyway, guys, I need to get out of here, but I want to leave you with five things. In order to be successful, Patwa, my girl, you don't know what sort of thing said. Me say me couldn't talk no Patwa, Poland. So they wouldn't understand me. So me have to just do the English thing, right? <laughs> So five simple things to be successful is make a plan, set your goals and timelines, do the research, specify timelines again, and, re and be professional and change the narrative. It's your girl, Ava Eagle Brown, saying, I'm not going to ask you to come and work with me. I'm not going to tell you, say, if you want to come and work with me, if you want a coach, that's going to get you results. If you want a coach, that's going to push you forward. If you want somebody who has success as success clues are there, then I'm the person. I'm not going to beg you to work with me. I'm going to tell you that if you think that I'm the coach for you, then have a conversation because you might just want to work with me and then I'm not the coach for you. Who knows? But I know for sure if we choose each other, 
your life is going to be different. So if you're not on my Facebook group, come over and join us at in, um, Awakening Your Best Life. But also on the 6th of October, I have a call in my Facebook group. It's going to be for two hours of my time. I'm giving away two hours of my time in my Facebook group where I'm going to be talking about fear. The thing that holds most of you back is fear. Night has fallen. It's time for me to go. It's Ava Eagle Brown in the house saying, I'm happy to have served you. I hope you can get something from this Facebook Live. I know that I've touched a few corns, but if you get nothing else, get this. Your success matters to me, and that's why I have to tell you the truth. So have a good night. See you guys on the other side. And until then, my face is dark and I cannot see. So I'm out of here, okay? I've been on here before it was dark. Now it's dark. It's time to say, time to say goodbye. <laughs> see you guys later. Bye-bye.